And welcome back. Uh, we are now at part two of two weeks ago's new comics. Bitch ass! Um, so, newish comics, bitch ass. Uh, okay. Um, uh, I'm going to sound off on a pet peeve here and then go into the review. Uh, so, right now, we're going to talk about uh, the Ultimates. Uh, Ultimate Comics, The Ultimates, number one. Okay. Now this came in this. Um, I hate these. I hate polybagging. Okay? Polybagging pisses me off. Because it's like, oh, well, if you really want to keep the value of this, you got to keep it in the polybag, man. And it's like, you know, fuck you. You know, I'm not getting two issues of a comic. Comic books are meant to be read, okay? You read them, then you bag and board them if you want, and then that's what you do. You don't just keep them in a poly bag and then, you know, wait, f you know, or either buy two issues, which, I mean, can be good. You know, it's good for the comics industry. It's kind of bad for your wallet, uh, especially when you got a clock in it at three ninety nine. But, um, you know, it's just, it's such a huge pet peeve of mine. You know, I didn't like the fact they did, you know, uh, you know Ultimate Spider-Man 160 in a poly bag. But, you know, whatever. To, to each their own. Uh, it's just, like I said, it's just, it's just a money grabber, you know, thing. And it just bothers me. Anyway. So, uh, at the, you know, at the outset, we seem to have Reed Richards. I think it's Reed Richards. Um... You know, and his kind of, uh, uh, you know, his, his kind of, uh, you know, fringe army of, uh, you know, people that he, you know, again, wanting to make the world perfect, making it a better place, uh, doesn't always mean that you're not going to get your hands really dirty. Um, uh, because we saw this in Ultimate Fallout, we saw Reed Richards, we saw, you know, basically, you know, his people. So, I mean, that's what it seems to be. Um, and, you know, right back we're with, and I just, I love this right here. I just, I just, I love this page because it's, I just, I like the little ink spots and everything like that that are on there. Just, it, you know, it gives you an idea of, you know, this isn't going to be the cleanest comic that you've ever read. Uh, that's going to get messy. And that's what it does because the whole fucking world's a mess. You know, because uh, Nick Fury gets into the Triskelion, things are popping because there's like 24 zones that are uh, that they're you know that they're looking into. Some of them are at different you know they're all, they're at different threat levels and everything like that. And you know the the big threat levels are uh, in uh, South America uh, near Montevideo uh, and. Uh, um, and the uh, the Southeastern Asian Republic, or the SEAR, SEER, whatever. Now he's got Iron Man deployed or, uh, in uh, Montevideo. He's got Hawkeye about to touch down uh, in the SEER. Um, but the other uh, issue that's going on is that Thor and some of his Asgardian brethren uh, have uh, pillaged a beer factory uh, in Europe, and the European Union super soldiers uh, are going there to have a to have a talk and see if they can kind of calm things down. Um, that doesn't go the way that they uh, thought it would, um, mostly because uh, now I I don't know what happened to Brian Braddock, who was the you know Captain Britain uh, while uh, uh, while Miller was doing this. Uh, well, Mark Miller was doing this, so I, I don't know what happened to him, if something happened during the Jeff Loeb run, if he was killed or something like that. I honestly have no idea. Um, or in another one of the peripheral uh, titles. I don't remember if anything happened to him. Because, uh, anyway, Jamie Braddock is the new uh, Captain Britain. I, that, it may mean something, it may not. I don't know. Um, but he kind of starts some shit with Thor, and that's never a good idea. Um, but there are pages of this that actually are from Ultimate Fallout, so that way it, it kind of cheapened the the experience for me a little bit because there is the segment with uh, 
um, with the new uh, uh, Jarvis. And I don't know, maybe I'm hallucinating or something like that, but I did see these pages. I did see some of these pages, and I don't know if I was reading. I, I might, so I might have honestly read, uh, seen these online through like bleedingcool.com, because uh, I know they did tease some of the stuff. Uh, but I swear to God, I, I, I think that some of these pages did exist in uh, Ultimate Fallout. Um, so if I'm wrong on that, please correct me. I know that somebody will. Um, but like, you know, uh, Tony's new Jarvis, uh, you know, some of the stuff that happens on the Triskelion. Um, anyway, just the shit hits the fan for everybody. Tony's in trouble. Thor's in trouble. Hawkeye is in trouble. We don't know what's going on, but it has to do with, looks like some stolen Stark tech and whatever this kind of big, you know, mushroom type thing that uh, uh, Reed Richards uh, has constructed, has sent down to, uh, to this plane of existence. Um, now, uh, presumably, we'll learn more about what's going on with Hawkeye in Ultimate Comics Hawkeye, which I'm really, really waiting for and really excited for. Um, but, uh, again, like I said, if, if I'm wrong about the whole, some of these pages appearing in Ultimate Fall, please tell me, because that felt like it cheapened it for me. But overall, this is an incredibly strong comic. Um, I really, really, really dig the shit out of the art. Um, and, uh, so this is, um, god damn it, uh, yeah, uh, Isad Ribic, um, I don't know who he is, um, I've never heard of him before, but he does really, really, really excellent work with the, uh, like, kind of Cassidy-esque art, and I also like the fact that when they lose the, they lose the audio feed, to uh, what's going on with Thor and everybody, um, that there's no that there's no sound, there's no speak, there's no speech. It just they just let the pictures do the work. You know, uh, so Hickman and Ribic really you know do themselves proud, particularly in those sequences. Um, shit, uh, sorry, my air conditioning just kicked on um, because it's hot. Anyways, but. It, Again, it's a really solid start to uh, what I'm hoping will be a really memorable run for the Ultimates. You know, it'll uh, kind of get away from kind of some of this, uh, you know, uh, you know. No, I shouldn't say get away, but I mean, you know, uh, Miller did some stuff with the you know Ultimate Comics Avengers for a while, and that was it. Got kind of silly, especially the, like the vampire stuff. Um, um, but it was still fun to read. Uh, but, you know, I like that this is kind of getting back to more of an intrigue, action-based comic rather than, okay, it's just all fighting or, you know, I'm not even going to mention, you know, Jeff Loeb's run anymore ever again. I think it should be erased from, you know, like a mind wipe from the collective comic book geek consciousness. Uh, okay, so... Um, got Batman Gates of Gotham number five finale um, so you know it says right here okay the secret history of Gotham reveal um, I don't really think that's the case here but uh, whatever um, uh, what because uh, I didn't really get a whole lot of feel for the secret history but again you know we've got you know Scott Snyder uh, Kyle Higgins uh, doing the writing, so I mean that's you know two pretty strong writers. Obviously, I, th I think uh, you know the strongest writer that Batman's seen in a really long time, um, or at least the best in a really long time. Uh, and Kyle Higgins, I honestly don't know too much about his stuff, but he really wrote the hell out of this. Um, the art from the last issue of issue four, I, I, you know, I did complain about a lot. It just didn't seem good at all um, because it was really rushed, and you could tell this is much sleeker. Because I mean, I I know that their time constraints and everything like that, they're trying to get it all wrapped up before Flashpoint number five and Justice League number one. Um, but yes, we do finally at least get what's going on here with the architect 
and why he's doing this, and what and the fact that what he actually believes is a lie. Um, and so we do, you know, we do wrap this up. Um, you know, we find out more about what actually happened and why what he knows is a lie. Um, but more importantly, uh, what we do get is that, you know, Bruce is coming back to Gotham. Um, and there's never really a moment of resignation in this comic where Dick says, okay, well, I guess I'm not Batman anymore, so I gotta go do something else. So if Bruce is coming back to Gotham, that means that I'm, you know, obsolete as Batman. You, you know, you don't really get that feeling. So, I mean, in, in any of the books where Dick is, you know, the primary character, which is most of the Batman books. Uh, so that, you know, I, I feel kind of just in the Batman universe, feel kind of shortchanged. But still, this is, you know, just as a standalone series, this was really strong overall. Uh, really well written, very well plotted. I like the idea of going back into, you know, the beginnings of Gotham City uh, and the families that helped shape it. Um, now, moving along. Okay, so we've got Batman the Dark Knight, number five. Um, now, uh, Again, we've got another cover, another great cover by David Finch, uh, but uh, the art uh, is uh, Jason uh, F uh, Fabok, Fabok, whatever, um, who is you know basically doing his best kind of David Finch impersonation, if you will. Um, because one of the things that I did like about this book, uh, and again, this is you know just another more evidence of the rush to get this out before. The relaunch, um, but you know we've got you know the the culmination of the Golden Dawn story arc, uh, where you know basically Batman is trying his best to protect Dawn Golden, but uh, there's just you know he fails um, in in a couple of different ways. Um, we discover what's, you know, and then Batman, you know, because basically all these demons come to get Dawn, and Batman just can't protect, there's just way too many of them. Um, so he can't keep them away. And then the next thing you know, Batman wakes up from unconsciousness, and there's Etrigan and his Lady Blaze, uh, you know, and Etrigan is just looking to, you know, just, uh, just kill Batman. Um, at the behest of Blaze. Um, and then we have uh, Ragman, who, well, we, you know, we don't know what's been going on with Ragman, but apparently Ragman's body has been being used by Daddy Golden, uh, who has been dead, uh, to, uh, to get Dawn back so he can finish the ritual that he started that will ultimately, you know, bring him... Now, I forget exactly what the MacGuffin here is, um, you know, as far as what exactly he's searching for uh, in this demonic ritual, um, but that he needs to sacrifice her life to to do, um, because honestly, it wasn't that interesting. Uh, what was more interesting was the interaction with Atrigan and you know this demonic ragman and uh, you know some of the. Uh, peripheral stuff that was going on, like the girl who stole the Batmobile. Um, all this is wrapped up. Um, you know, you have uh, you know, Etrigan really kind of at war with this, uh, you know, with him, with uh, his own nature, and of course the desire to get his power and, his, but ultimately his rhyme back, which I think is really cool. Um, so it wraps up in kind of a sad way, uh, of course. Um, but I like the way that uh, the, uh, the little Batmobile thief uh, arc, you know, that story kind of wraps itself up. Um, you know, Batman planning ahead, because that's what he does. He's, uh, you know, Mr. Contingency Plan, so that's kind of cool. But overall, just kind of disappointing. I'm hoping that it really picks up, and uh, we'll see you in a bit. Okay.